The National Republic debt is the total accumulation of the federal government's total deficits and surpluses that have occurred through time. Deficits, and by extension the debt, are the results of war financing, recessions, and lack of political will to reduce or avoid them. Interest charges are the main burden imposed by the debt because government always has to at least pay the interest on their debt in order to remain in good credit standing. Can the federal government go bankrupt? Well, there's reasons why it can't. The government can raise taxes to pay back the debt, and it can always borrow more, like selling new bonds, to refinance bonds when they mature. Corporations use similar methods. They almost always have an outstanding debt. Of course, refinancing could become an issue with a high enough debt-to-GDP ratio. Some countries, such as Greece, have run into this problem. High and rising ratios in the United States might raise fears that the U.S. government might be unable to pay back loans as they come due. But with the present U.S. debt-to-GDP ratio and the prospects of long-term economic growth, this is a false concern for the United States. The government has the power to tax, which businesses and individuals do not have when they are in debt. Does the debt impose a burden on future generations? Well, in 2009, the per capita federal debt in U.S. was $37,437. But the public debt is also a public credit. Your grandmother may own the bonds on which taxpayers are paying interest. Someday, you may inherit these bonds, which are assets to those that have them. The true burden is borne by those who pay taxes or loan government money today to finance government spending. If the spending is for productive purposes, it will enhance future earning power and the size of the debt relative to future GDP and population could actually decline. Borrowing allows growth to occur when it is invested in productive capital. Repayment of the debt affects income distribution. If working taxpayers will be paying interest to the mainly wealthier groups who hold the bonds, this probably increases income inequality. Since interest must be paid out of government revenues, a large debt and high interest can increase the tax burden and may decrease incentives to work, save, and invest for taxpayers. A higher proportion of the debt is owed to, the, owed to foreigners, which is about 29%, than in the past, and this can increase the burden since payments leave the country. But Americans also own foreign bonds, and so this does offset that concern. Some economists believe that public borrowing crowds out private investment, but the extent of this effect is not clear. There are some positive aspects of borrowing, even with the crowding out. If borrowing is for public investment that causes the economy to grow more in the future, the burden on future generations will be less than if the government had not borrowed for this purpose. Public investment makes private investment more attractive. For example, new federal buildings generate private business. Good highways help private shipping. This figure shows the investment demand curve and the crowding out effect. If the investment demand curve, ID1, is fixed, the increase in the interest rate from 6% to 10% caused by financing a large public debt will move the economy from point A to point B, crowding out $10 billion of private investment and decreasing the size of capital stock inherited by future generations. However, if the public good enabled by the debt improves the investment prospects of businesses, the private investment demand curve will shift rightward as from ID1 to ID2. That shift may offset the crowding out effect wholly or in part. In this case, it moves the economy from point A to point C. Social Security is the major public retirement program in the United States. Half of the tax, 6.2%, is paid by individuals and half is paid by employers, the other 6.2%. The Medicare program is the U.S. health care program for people age 65 and older in the United States. Half of that tax, which is 1.45%, is paid by individuals and half is paid by the employers. There's an impending long-run shortfall in Social Security funding. It's what you call a pay-as-you-go system, meaning that current revenues are used to pay current retirees, instead of paying from funds accumulated over time. Despite efforts to build a trust fund, eventually Social Security revenues will fall below payouts to retirees.
Baby boomers are entering retirement age and living longer, meaning that there will be more recipients receiving payouts for longer periods of time. The ratio of the number of workers contributing to the system for each recipient has also declined. Numerous solutions have been suggested, and each has an economic trade-off. Could reduce benefits by reducing direct payments, taxing benefits, or increasing the age at which workers are eligible to receive their benefits. Increase revenues by raising payroll taxes. Increase the trust fund by setting aside more of the current system revenues or by investing trust fund monies in corporate stocks and bonds. Additionally, one solution is to allow workers to invest half of their payroll taxes in approved stock and bond. This is sometimes referred to as privatizing Social Security. There are many possible solutions, and the political process may well result in a combination of many policies proposed.